question is from Frines de Mamos. How would you go about curing a sugar addiction? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Whoa. So there's two parts to this. Um, one part is the physiological um, response that you have to sugar. The And sugar is part of the sugar, salt, fat mix that creates hyperpalatability. Um, there's a lot of things that create hyperpalatability. You know, and that refers to the just the hedonistic value of food, the pleasure of eating food. And sugar is a part of that, right? So the physiological effects are you eat it, you enjoy it, uh, makes you feel good, um, probably causes you to want more, just like anything you enjoy. By the way, this applies to anything that you have a lot of enjoyment over. It could be sex, it could be gambling, it could be drugs, and it could also be um, um, sugar. So there's the physiological effects. And when your body's used to something all the time, physiologically, when you remove it, you may notice some withdrawal. Now, sugar withdrawal, um, physiologically speaking, I'm going to talk about the psychological piece too in a second, but physiologically speaking, it's not like alcohol withdrawal or you know other drug withdrawal where you get this pronounced, even caffeine withdrawal is far worse, physiologically speaking. But you may notice that food just tastes more bland. That's the withdrawal physiologically. Your, 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 your brain was used to sweetness now you eliminate it, and now food just doesn't taste as good. That'll take you about a week to get rid of. And that's not really the big problem, though. That part right there is not that big of an issue. The bigger issue is the psychological piece. If you're using sugar as a way to make yourself feel better or to comfort yourself or as a way to distract yourself, when you remove that, you've lost your way of comforting yourself. You've lost your way of distracting yourself. Mm -hmm. Now you have to deal with whatever it was that you were you were trying to to numb or whatever, and this is true for anything that you use. Well, wasn't the that first way. part of that figuring out what those triggers are? Totally. Like, like when when you feel the urge, uh, like what time it is uh, during the day, like uh, what what sparked that in terms of like um, you, what kind of feeling you have, like is it if you've been depressed all day, like is is certain things like stressing you out, like uh, are you prone to then going and getting uh, this this sugar to kind of cope with that thing? Uh, but yeah, you have to find you have to find something else to replace that with, and and to be able to uh, you know create a new healthier habit, uh, and, and then create barriers sort of around uh, you know what your your go to is. So I I like talking about this because this is a this has been a, a lifelong uh, struggle for myself. <laughs> You're and, recovering. Yeah, I've been a, a, lo a long so time. So many Mike and Ike's recovering sugar ad uh, addict for sure. And there's there, and this may or may not work for you, but I'll I'll give you some things that uh, I've pieced together over decades of of working on this myself and and attempting and failing, attempting and failing, and getting better and better and better at it. Uh, one one thing I noticed for sure was, uh, I, I once I started to avoid uh, processed foods, and this includes the the healthy processed foods like protein bars. Mm. Uh, if it's got sugar, alcohols, and artificial sweeteners in it. Um, those are what is it? I think it's a hundred or a thousand times sweeter than yeah. than regular sugar. It's still giving that perception it's of powerful. sweet. So yeah, it's it, it it gives you that perception even more. Um, like that. This was even why it was so hard for me to get rid of like diet cokes. Was like that was like the kind of the last straw for me was like eliminating that because it still was giving me that feeling of like getting that much sugar even though I wasn't getting real sugar. So. Uh, getting rid of all of that, um, and I would say South, South said a week. It, it took me a, a little bit longer than a week. I'd say it took me about a solid month um, before like f the the taste of fruit came back. Like literally, I could eat a, a strawberry, blueberries, a banana, and they like tasted like nothing. Mm. Like I, they tasted bland for me for many many years. I just I never even really cared for fruit because of that. And it wasn't until I eliminated all the all the the processed uh, uh, sugars and, and artificial sweeteners out of the diet and and consistently did that like really really good for us at least a solid month and then when I would start to have things like strawberries and bananas and blueberries uh, I, I was so blown away by how amazing they tasted but I they never tasted like that for me because of how much I was constantly eating mm -hmm. sugar so that was one thing that really helped the second thing that helped a lot uh, was actually doing like a ketogenic diet a higher fat diet lower carbohydrate. Um, I noticed when, and so, you know, keto would, would, would work, work probably well for this. Carnivore would work uh, really well for this. Um, uh, I've recommended like Whole30 to people before to get them going on this for a while will help like with the Whole Foods. But uh, a higher fat, lower carbohydrate intake 
te- seemed to kick or uh, kick some of the the crazy cravings that I would get. What mm. I would find if I had, let's say, something that wasn't even like lots of sugar, just like a, a major car, a quick carb, like a, a um, oatmeal for breakfast. I'd have oatmeal and, and blueberries for breakfast. And man, two hours later, I would just be craving mm-hmm. food uh, more. And if I let that go longer than two or three hours, then the the sweet and the bad mm-hmm. would start to crave even harder. So uh, switching to a breakfast like eggs and bacon and 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 like maybe a fatty meat uh, or you know butter in there or avocado, like having that for breakfast, uh, I noticed not only satiated me, but it also eliminated a lot of the cravings that I was having for the sweet. So. Those are just a couple things that, um, and like anything else, I, I I would wing myself off. I wouldn't go if you're, you know, first evaluate how how bad your sugar addiction is. Are you eating, you know, 150 grams a day, 200, 300 grams a day? Like, uh, figure out where you're at and and slowly start to scale out. And the way I would scale out is by first uh, eliminating the the processed foods, uh, uh, eliminating because sugar fruit not bad i mean that's that and for me that's what i'm always looking for i'm looking for you know 90% or all of my sugar is coming from fruit now and then the rest of it is not found in my foods or you know, other bullshit we've seen uh, products uh, be developed around this where they try to change the actual flavor of sweet and turn it into like a sour or a bitter oh, yeah. yeah and so i was it's interesting i would love to see the success rate with that but obviously you know, that, that's something that you already have to agree to want yeah. to put in before then you grab your normal like snicker bar or whatever to kind of cope with. It's like it eliminates the pleasure of it. Are you really going to do that? Yeah, it's, it, it requires you to stop, be aware enough to do something then, then to, de- to then make the thing that is pleasurable to you uh, not be pleasurable anymore. Um, which may work if it is a if it's a, a type yeah, of barrier. If you're disciplined enough. Yeah, if it's a barrier for you um, and you and you take that extra step. You know, if you you have to address both, you have to address the the physiological aspect of it, like we're talking about, where you know food tastes bland. That one's not that hard to deal with uh, when you take out the psychological piece. The psychological piece is the hard part. It's like, why? What is it that this food is providing? Um, typically, it's pleasure. It feels good. Okay, why am I seeking this pleasure? And perhaps you're addicted to good feelings, which is which is very very common. All of us have dealt with this or most people have dealt with this, or maybe you're just feeling bad about something um, and, and that's your way of, of distracting yourself. And so it does it does require a certain level of uh, you know willingness to Im- increase or improve that self-awareness. Um, it's sometimes people try to fix a problem by n- still remaining unaware and just going on a strict diet of some su- some type. And what that tends to lead to is, you restrict binge type model, which just doesn't work. So that self-awareness piece is, is such an important part of uh, working on any type of, uh, you know, I hate to use the word addiction because that's a clinical term, but anything that you feel has power over you uh, that you wish didn't have that much power over you. Next 